started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. And mental health as a mom, oh my gosh, huge. I think that healing myself and motherhood has has to go hand in hand because he is happier and better for it because I've done the work on myself. And it needs to start with you believing in yourself that no matter what is going on around you, that you as a person right now, you are worthy. You are purposeful. You are needed. I feel like I'm finally home. <laughs> I feel like I'm finally in this place where I am happy to be me. I'm happy in my skin and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. I'm so excited to have you here, Erica Jones. Welcome to the Make Life Fun podcast. Today on this episode, we are going to be talking about Erica's journey into motherhood and also about using your voice and how that shows up in your motherhood journey. So welcome, Erica. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I am thrilled and honored to be here. So thank you for having me. Tell us your motherhood journey, your story of what just all of it. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> well, so to start, I have two kiddos. My boy Rico is eight. And then my little girl, Zara, who's not so little anymore, but still small. She is four. When I got pregnant with my son, I knew exactly how I wanted it to all play out. Right. We always do. We have this idea of what exactly we want that to look like, like the birth, the, the whole journey, everything. So I knew I wanted a natural birth and I was preparing for that. So I was doing prenatal yoga. I was reading all the books, doing everything I could that I knew I could do to prepare myself and give myself the best possibility of that happening. And it didn't happen. So I went into labor, which was great. It was very fast though, but I ended up having an emergency C-section and it was a very traumatizing experience for me because of the situation. They had to take me away. My husband couldn't go with me and they had to completely put me under. So imagine I'm being whisked off while my son is in the birth canal, he was down there on his way out, but just couldn't continue. So he was down there. So it was extremely urgent that we get him out. So they whisked me off by myself. I leave my husband, everyone behind. I'm having contractions strapped down on this bed, which is horrible, you know? And then they tell me, you're going to go to sleep now. And sh I went to sleep and wake up and I had my healthy baby. So he was healthy and all is well, but that was a very scary experience for me. So that was my first experience having birth. And then fast forward four years, I guess, I get pregnant again. And this time I knew again, I wanted to have this V back. I still wanted that vaginal birth, that natural birthing experience. And so I prepared myself once again, doing all the things I knew I could do, but more so mentally this time, I think. I think I really knew the mindset I needed to go in with. So I did way more mindset work this time. And lo and behold, I got a VBAC and it was the most amazing experience in the whole world. That just gave me chills. I can't even tell you the feeling like it was a very spiritual experience and it was very fast. Like I started having contractions. My water actually broke. My water didn't break the first time. My water actually broke with Zara. And then from there, it was like within two, three hours or so she was here. That is amazing. I'm congratulations. Like, thank you. I'm so happy that you got that Hearing You tell that story gave me chills, but I want to unpack two things that you said. So you said the first time it was traumatic. It was scary. So you had to heal from that. So after I gave birth and we had my son, it was my first child. That first year, honestly, was really hard, like really hard. It's the hardest year, one of the hardest years my marriage took. 
it definitely was insanely hard on me mentally. I struggled a lot with like depression and anxiety about my son just in general afterwards. And I never had that before. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really, I think, until I was preparing for the birth of Zara that I really took notice of how traumatic everything was, how I, I actually hadn't done anything to heal or mm -hmm. move forward from that emotionally. So once I actually, I guess, recognized, I just, I started doing all of the mind work around it. And so really just unpacking what did happen. That wasn't my fault. You know, like it was not my fault. It wasn't the way I wanted it to go, but it also wasn't my fault. And like, and it's okay in the sense, my, I, I have a beautiful son here. He's healthy. We're both healthy. We survived that experience. And so now it's, it's time to reframe that situation, right? Because I don't want to bring that kind of scared energy into this next birth that I was yes. preparing for. And I knew that, like, I knew somehow I have to get through all of those feelings because I, I know I can't hold space to have this new birth if I have that. So you had to shift your mindset from your traumatic experience, but then you said you had to develop a whole new mindset to get into doing a VBAC and having that natural vaginal birth that you craved so much. Right. So tell us how that mindset worked for you to be able to get in that space where you were able to say, this is what I want and this is what I deserve. And this is what my body was created to do. Like, how are you yeah. able to? Yeah. So I did the prenatal yoga again. And in that, the one that I took, we did a lot of affirmations and really affirming our body and how powerful it was, because I think I had lost, like, I didn't trust that my body could do that. Mm -hmm. I was scared. I, and I didn't trust that it could do that. So for me to start to believe, no, I was made for this, actually, like my body was created for this. And so it was the affirmations, I think a lot of affirmations and a lot of meditating. I love yoga and meditation anyways. So that was very easy for me. And I think just putting as many of those affirming positive thoughts in there as possible and then releasing, so crying out and really grieving that first birth, grieving all of that and just letting it out. And then like filling myself back up with the affirming positive. Uh, so it was like a, a releasing, a letting go and almost a surrendering. Yes, it, which is perfect, like a perfect segue into the birth of my daughter versus the birth of my son. So with my daughter now and looking back in retrospect, I was way more pliable, flexible, allowing. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Whereas with my son, it was way more clenching gripping control so, exactly exactly so you can see right such a beautiful way to yeah. define the two and how when we start to let go and we start to surrender to what is possible whether it be in parenthood or in life in general like it becomes easier yes but it's the getting to that letting go getting to that surrender that's the practice Yes, it's that. And then it's also making sure that you're filling yourself with the positive with all. So I also read all the books about VBACs so I could reinforce the thought that VBACs are very possible. You are okay having one, you know, if you didn't have any prior issues or whatever. But so I had to also do that part of it as well. It wasn't just becoming more flexible and releasing, but I also needed to continue to concrete that thought that you can do this. VBACs are possible. There's other women out there doing it over and over and over again, you know, to, to so really was, help with my confidence in that. Yeah. So it was like a self-persuasion almost. You had to persuade mm -hmm. yourself into believing that it was possible for you. Yeah. Affirmations are huge for me. I've been doing them my whole life, but they haven't always worked my whole life because you just say it. I believe in myself. I am enough. But I heard once that affirmations is a way of persuading yourself. It's a way of gently bringing yourself to the belief that it might be possible. Mm -hmm. Instead of just saying these words out into the world, you're telling yourself, this could be possible that I am enough. This could be possible that I'm worthy. This could be possible that I could have a VBAC and 
I could do this. So yeah. persuading yourself and learning from the people that have done it in the past was your way of like making it so it was possible for you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was dealing with all of those subconscious beliefs that are deep in there. Mm -hmm. Right. And you were talking about the releasing. And I think that's huge as well. Most of the time, we just want to get to the happy parts. We're like, okay, well, what what we can control and let's do it now. Yes. And so in the releasing, you said you were crying and you were shedding that belief of like all the things that you went through. Do you mind sharing with us a little bit deeper into that release journey? Like thinking back, I guess it would really just be in those moments of meditation, even now, now as a mom and everything that you just deal with on a daily basis. Now in meditation, I still cry and all of that. So it would just, it would happen. It happens during meditation. I don't remember specifically. I feel like it was so long ago. (laughs) It's a lot of times when I'm in meditation and I'm, I'm filling myself with filling myself up with those those thoughts that I am capable, my body is strong, my baby is strong, you know, and in that releasing just whatever needs to come out. And everybody, I believe, will release in their different ways. Some people is crying. Some people, it's punching your pillow. That image just came up Um, in my mind. Some people is going out for like a run or an exercise. So as far as releasing goes, you have to find what your release is. Like you were saying for you, it was meditation and crying and letting it go. Mm -hmm. For some people, it could be completely the opposite. So Mm -hmm. I just wanted to emphasize that you have to give yourself that space to release. You have to give yourself that space to feel the feeling that is sometimes so uncomfortable. And that's what, what I was thinking about when you were just talking is like, really for me, it was facing it, facing all these things that I wanted to kind of shut away and shut down. It was really facing that, you know, cause that stuff is stuck in there. That energy is stuck in there and it stays stuck if you don't face it mm-hmm. and allow it to go out. What you said just thought to me, you have to bring it to the light. It's like anything in the darkness you can't heal from. You can't, mm. you can't do anything about it because it's almost like you, it's not there almost because it's so deep down. So you have to bring it up. You have to bring it to the light. You have to admit it to yourself. You have to want to see it yeah. in order to be able to let go. Yeah. Which is perfect because that's like with like our voice and using our voice as moms, as women, you know, I, for so many years. I think if you're not careful, your voice can just get pushed down and pushed down. And even in the birthing scenario, if you're not using your voice, the medical community will will give you the birth that they want you to have. So you have to use your voice and be very vocal with what kind of a birth you want. So yeah, we won't go there. I love (laughs) though. I love that you brought that up. We are going to go there because (laughs) I think that is so powerful because I know not only the people that are listening are going to be parents, like these are going to be pregnant women. These are going to be women that are wanting children in the future. And that is such a powerful thing. You just says using your voice to have the birth that you desire. Mm -hmm. You have to. You have to. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then get someone else who will. So I had a doula. No, I had a midwife. You can also have a doula, whatever. But my midwife, I told her the birth that I wanted, that I desired. And so she was going to be my advocate. If I'm because I'm in the zone, I'm trying to breathe through these contractions. And if you're not there, like they will tell you, okay, I'm about to give you this medicine. And if you don't want any medicine, somebody's got to be there to say, no, 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 no. She didn't want any. Thank you. But no, I had a midwife that was my advocate for exactly what I didn't want and what I did want. Yeah. And for me, it was my husband. He and I went through what I wanted and what I didn't want. And also I had a doula. She wasn't in the birthing room with me, but she was on like texting. So whatever they would say something, my husband would message her. I would message her. And she was, she was like a godsend, honestly, like Mm -hmm. hindsight, like at the time I knew she was like, I needed her, but looking back, I'm like, (laughs) oh gosh. Because oh, and they you- wanted to make it go so much quicker at the hospital. They wanted it to be like one and done almost. Yep. And she was like, no, you're going to tell them you're sleeping for the next few hours while your contractions are light, because once they start coming, you're not going to get that rest. So you're mm-hmm. telling them you're sleeping period. And I was like, 
I'm sleepy, period. And that was so empowering for me to be able to say that instead of be like, okay, you're the professionals, you know what to do. So I love that you brought that up, that you have to use your voice. And if you can't, you have to have somebody who knows what you want. Somebody who is there in your back corner, like cheering you on, who is Mm -hmm. your, your person. Yeah. Well, and I think some women don't even know that they have the option to say, no, I don't want you to give my baby a bath right after, or no, I want the baby to remain on me for as long as possible. Yes. Like they don't even know that they can say no. So So using your voice is so powerful in the birthing, so important. And now I would love for you to elaborate and using your voice as a mother, using your voice as a partner, using your voice, just using it. I probably didn't really start using my voice like in I feel like in life I feel like I'm using my voice now now that I've quit my corporate job and I've been home for over a year and a half I've been doing a ton of mental mindset work and so now I feel like I'm really actually using my voice so what does that look like that looks like me actually asking Erica what does Erica want Mm. is that even allowable (laughs) It's not a word. Like, is that even allowed? Now that I've got these two kids, like, is it allowed that I can even look at what I desire? Oh gosh. So there's so many like mindset, like emotional roller coasters, like slapping you along on. It's okay for me to honor my desires and then flip flop to be like, well, no, now that I do know how important it is to, to honor Erica first. So that way I can give to these humans over here. Now I can say it. Now I can ask if I need help. Now I can verbalize when I'm needing help or what I, what I would like, what mommy would like, you know, like, no, we're not doing that today because maybe mommy's tired. So it's really, it's honestly having the courage to, to say no sometimes and to say yes more to myself. And I think you hit that nail on the head. It takes courage. It's not easy. No, because that's ruffling feathers, you know, sometimes depending on how much of a people pleaser you may be, they, they, your family may be used to you doing the majority of things. So if you start saying no, or pushing back to that, there might be a little bit of tension or opportunity for conversation. Yes. I like the way you phrase (laughs) that. These are teaching moments. You know what? We've had some of those, even just, I think about in, in my marriage, you know, I ask for more help in my marriage with the dishes before I would just clank the cabinets around real loud, trying to get help. <laughs> attention, like attention. Help, right? Like that ever help. Let me slam this door. Cause that's going to really let them know I need help from here. <laughs> You're not the only one. You just made it so relatable. So real. If you watch the movies, that's what we see as normal. Like women are angry. So they're going to clean the dishes. They're going to stump around. They're going to go close themselves in the bedroom. But really, what does that solve? So now, you know, I, if I need help, I ask for it. Do I want to spend the rest of the day pissed off because I didn't use my voice? I can't blame anybody but me mm-hmm. if I didn't ask for help. It starts with using your voice to ask for what you want. And what you were saying about mindset, like everything we're talking about today seems to revolve around mindset. So can you yeah. share with us how you found that work like what work on the mindset did you do like was there one thing that you can think of that sparked it was it multiple things man it's been so many things I look at over the past year and a half I started working with a life coach numero uno (laughs) because I say because but working with a life coach puts someone else there that will make you look at the other perspectives another possibility when we're so close-minded in our own thoughts, if no one's there to open you up and expand your mind, it's like you're pointless. So I've, I've worked with a life coach now this whole time, past year and a half, and have just been really letting go of limiting beliefs, honestly, that I've held on to for many, 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 many years. So letting go of releasing limiting beliefs, working with a life coach, meditate, affirmations. I do mirror work. I do a lot of like daily self-work. So mirror work, I'm talking to myself. I'm loving up on myself as much as I can. And that right there, honestly, I have found has been, let's see, I stopped drinking alcohol. That was another thing. Yes. (laughs) So I'm like, it'll be a year 
come January. And that was my goal. That has been huge for my marriage, for my relationship with my kids, my happiness, my anxiety. And it's all the things coming together. Like it's not just one thing. And that's why it, you can't just go and find the magic pill. It's all these things, but it's the majority of it is here. It's all in the head. So for me, if I stopped the alcohol, which allowed me, made space for me to start doing the internal work. Mm -hmm. From there, it started coming out and you could start seeing all of now the things, all of the mind work that mindset work that I've been doing. How is it coming out? My relationships are better. I am happier. I love myself so much more. And in turn, my body is like showing that I've released weight that was just hanging on because I've loved myself more. I love that you just said that. My brother was over two nights ago and he said, did you get skinny? Did this just happen overnight? And I said, <laughs> he's like, what are you doing? Are you working out? I said, no, I'm just healing. <laughs> it's right. And that is it. You, that was the perfect answer. Because I honestly was working out so hard and nothing was happening. I stopped working out, started drinking water, started loving up on myself and the weight is literally just falling off. So Mm -hmm. it is a truth. Love yourself. It's the truth. That's the cure all. Love yourself. And I also love that you talked about having a mentor. I heard somewhere that somebody was saying that you can't see your own face. You can't see your own eyebrows. Like you can't see what's on your face. So you need somebody else to be like, girl, you have some yeah. something on your face. You have something in your teeth. Let me help you. <laughs> so I think that's what it's like to have a mentor, to have a coach is like, they tell you if something's on your face and mm-hmm. you get to then be open to prop. You have to be open to process it, but they can p- help point it out for you, but you right. can't see. And right. also I love that you were talking about beliefs. You said it starts with your beliefs. Like you have to believe that you can do it. and. The other day I was in a coaching program and they were talking about how belief, it doesn't matter whether or not you are doubting yourself or whether or not you have faith. Those are both beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, my mind exploded because I never would have thought it's doubt. Oh yeah, definitely. I did a post something about like the way my belief system is set up, like whether you believe or not, that's what happens because the way your belief system is set up that is what will become your reality is what you believe. And right now you're believing something. You're either believing for it, for something or not for it or not for something, but you're believing something like you have faith already in something In something. (laughs) Yeah. It might not be, it might be in the the negative outcome though, Mm -hmm. instead of having faith in possibilities. Yeah. You might be fighting for your limitations saying I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. And that's the belief then you have, and that's how it shows up for you. Mm-hmm. Or you can go, as you were saying, I now love myself. I now pump myself up. I now voice what I need and I ask for it. That shows up differently as well. Right. Well, and the thing though, like working with the life coach, if you're so far kind of down the ladder or on the emotional ladder, let's say you're hating yourself. And so to try on a thought of, God, I love myself. I'm so beautiful. I am the, you know, I am the business (laughs) that seems really far to get from where you were in thought process all the way up here. So a life coach or a coach, a mentor can help you kind of come up that ladder with the different thoughts you can try on. So maybe we're not up at a 10 with, I am all that, but maybe I'm at like a number three where I can see it's possible that I could lose weight or it's possible that I could make more money or, you know, whatever. They will help you kind of come up that ladder and not just stay down there like at a one. (laughs) Yeah. I want to congratulate you too, before I pass it on. I want to congratulate you for the whole not drinking for a year in January. Like, wow. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like at 11 months, I think. Amazing. And that's so huge for me. So I can't even, t- if I had a dollar, look, I'm like speechless over here. If I had a dollar for every day one I've had in my life, girl, <laughs> we'd be rich. But you know what? It's been the most amazing thing for me, honestly. It's been like a domino effect. Once that happened, it just went like on a snowball effect of everything just progressing and becoming better. You know, there's still hard days. There's still crap that happens. That's life. But 
that hold, that grip that was on me so tight is no longer there, Mm -hmm. which is so freeing. I can't even tell you because I know what it's like to feel like I can never get over this. This, this thing is just always going to have me. So to get away from that, it's like, it just opens up so many doors and possibilities. It's amazing. You deserve to be so proud of yourself. And the fact that you were able to keep that promise to yourself, it just shows you that you could do anything. Yeah. I remember when I made that decision, it took me a little bit to actually make the decision and go forward with it. I dragged my butt on it. But the thing that did it for me was, you know what? I think I don't know that Erica who's gone a year without drinking. I don't know her, but I have a feeling she's got to be pretty badass to be able to go a year without drinking. Like, I wonder what she's like. I want to know her. And you know what? I know her. She's pretty cool. Like, she's pretty cool. (laughs) That's what I said the other day. I was like, who knew alcohol-free Erica was so much fun? So good. So you got curious and you made a decision. It wasn't like I just woke up one day and said, I want to be sober for a year. So this has been a thing that I had been working on for a long time and knew I needed to do something about it. I wanted to, I tried so many things before, but I I really wanted to know what could my life look like? Like, I know it can only be positive. Thank you for sharing that with us and letting us celebrate you because yeah, you deserve it. Thank you. So using your voice as a mom (laughs) with your kids on the daily, tell us more. I've got so many voices with those kids. Which one would you like to talk about? (laughs) The nice one? (laughs) Both. all The fun one. The angry one. Oh my goodness. That angry mama. I'll be honest and say that I have a temper. And that angry mama monster, like I've had to get her in check. And it is a daily work, honestly. But being alcohol free has helped with normalize emotions, normalize anxiety stuff, right? Which has allowed me not to be so flippant with my kids also, flippant with my husband. So that has helped, but it is still a daily work, girl. I think they were put here for that. To teach I think our children, yeah. Or something. Yeah, I think that's the daily work that our kids are put on this earth to help us do, help us to manage our emotions. Because I believe when we can manage our emotions, that shows our, like we can have angry days. We can have those moments of like going a little crazy, but being able to come back and say, you know what, what I did was wrong. Like I didn't mean to, I am sorry. I think there's value in that. That I can't honestly tell you how many times, like that's part of my journey in letting go of that controlling Erica, that angry has to control everything Erica, that like when it comes to my kids, when I find myself in those times and I do um, like have an outburst or whatever it is, now they happen way less. And now I'm way quicker to come back and actually talk to them about it, like apologize for it. I wouldn't have done that before. And that, let me tell you, that's a gut wrencher. It really is. You're coming to your kids crying, like saying, sorry. It makes you human. It does. And it shows them. Like, I also want to show them that mommy's human. Mommy has hard days, hard moments, but she also comes back and says, sorry, and talks about it. Because that's also important. Yes. You know, they need to see the good, bad, and the ugly, and the I'm sorry, and let's move forward and forgiveness. <laughs> you know, I ask my kids for forgiveness too. And that, in a sense, gives them the permission to do the same. Yeah. I mean, they only know what we show them. They mm-hmm. like the way they're going to treat their kids or their spouse or whatever, that's all learned behavior which is like scary, (laughs) right? Like no pressure, mom. But it's the awareness piece of knowing that in the, I mean, that's what drives me every day. I know my little man's little, so it's easy right now. I know it's not always going to be like this. So I am like relishing in the ease of it right now. But that is what I tell myself every day is I could say whatever I want to say, but if I am not showing it, if I, my vibe isn't, is it vibing it? Like, is it 100% embodied? 
then he's picking up something completely different. Yeah. And yeah. I love knowing that. I just love knowing that I have control. If I'm aware of it, I can always come back to like the present moment and like have that yeah. control of it, even though it's not always going to be 100. But having that awareness, I think, plays a huge, huge factor. Yeah. And one thing now as I'm older and I'm on this whole journey of using my voice, expressing my voice and how important that is, I also want to teach that to them and model mm -hmm. that to them. You know, so I even when we are in those tension filled moments, I try to ask them, like, what are you feeling right now? What is it? Tell me. Mm -hmm. Like, I really try to do my best at bringing it out because I know that it has to come out. <laughs> we can't keep stuff bottled in. As I'm growing and learning and applying all these techniques and practices to myself, I'm also doing that and practicing that with my children because I, I want to model that for them. I, you know, I think a lot of us, we're not okay individually. And so we raise that, we show that like we're modeling to not do the self work, to not check in with self, you know, and I don't, I don't want to model that for them. I don't want to set them up for that. So even like the mirror work, I do that with my children. Mm -hmm. We're speaking into our eyes, loving up on ourselves. I love um, that. I try to start getting them on visualization, like let's start thinking about what kind of a fun day we're going to have tomorrow yes. to start the whole imagining and visualization early. I love yes. that. Tell us about fun mom, Erica. Fun mom is just me showing up and really making a goal to laugh today. Like, let's just have fun. My God, can we just have fun today? <laughs> I try to show up having fun on my social media with my family. Like they're part of my life. I, they're with me all the time. So they're there having fun too. It's just, I guess showing up fun is me being vulnerable, not caring if my mom pouch or my double chin might be showing in that little shot right there. Like, you know, it's that is what it is. That's so good. So for you, fun equals laughter. So joking. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Joking and just laughing. Like I do reels only to make people laugh. I want to make people laugh because God, we need more of that energy. The yes. world needs that energy. Yes. Laughter. Mm -hmm. My mom growing up always says laughter is the best medicine. It is. People cure cancers with laughter. Mm -hmm. Look it up. <laughs> people, we need to laugh more. Yeah. Laugh, have fun and play. For me, play, fun, laughter is going outside, being in nature, Mm. Turning up the music, having a dance party in front of the mirror. Yes. <laughs> Yesterday, the funniest thing happened. <laughs> so I went and picked up the turkey for Thanksgiving and I needed some eggs. So I bought a thing of eggs and the turkey. I put them in the back seat, and I knew in my head, I thought maybe I should put the eggs on the floor, but I did it. I kept the eggs on the, Girl. on the seat next <laughs> to the turkey. Next thing I know, the turkey rolls on top of the eggs. Oh, no. my, <laughs> my first thought was like, oh no. And then I just started laughing out loud, busted a gut by myself with well, ever to the back seat. I'm just like, well, good for you. At this point, that's all we can do. Let's just laugh. <laughs> so we have to find, even if those moments yeah. where you just want to scream your head off, if you tell yourself, no, this is a little funny. Like it might yeah. not be funny now, but it probably is going to be funny like tomorrow. Like it's fu yeah. like find some joy in something. For me, something. it's yeah, cranking up the music and having a dance party and getting outside. I'm homeschooling my four-year-old. So I definitely have us get outside. And that, as you were saying that, it made me think of a time when, you know, my, it's my daughter who I'm homeschooling. So we go like this a lot of time. <laughs> And it takes a very conscious mama for us to like be, be cool for the vibe to be cool. I have to have my mind right and my vibe right in order for the whole situation to be cool. One day we were at it and it was not cool. And luckily I remembered Tony Robbins, you know, he's so big on just changing your physiology in an interesting. We've talked about this. Yeah. So I remember we were here in the kitchen, tears were welling up in both of us. I'm feeling it like it's happening. And luckily that thought had come into my head about Tony Robbins. So I was like, uh-uh, okay, shake it out. Let's jump. <laughs> yes. And we literally started just jumping and moving our body to move that negative energy, energy in our body. And it worked like it released. So that, yeah, doing yes. that, moving your body. 
Let's talk about energy. I that's the topic I could probably talk for <laughs> more than an hour on, but we can talk a little bit about energy a little bit. How energy plays a role in literally everything. Yeah, it's everything. It's it really is everything. Like so doing the mindset work, which is working with the life coach and me doing all of the self work. It's what it is. Self work all about what are we believing because everything that's going on up in our head comes out, which is the energy and the feeling, the, the face we carry on us, everything. So if I can start my day, like with the homeschooling and with her up here already priming myself with the thoughts and the imagination, the vision of how I want it to go, that starts to be pushed out with the energy, right? So, Hey, we're gonna have fun today let's move around it's an intention it is it is it is an intention I, and that's why I said a minute ago mama has to be very intentional and mindful about what I'm carrying and doing up here because that it's so much better the day is better all of that is better if I'm up if I'm okay and right up here in the head mm-hmm. well it has been such a pleasure having this conversation always my god yeah (laughs) it's so easy to talk to you no you're the best (laughs) I would love to hear where our listeners could get in contact with you support you love on you cheer you on and laugh with you at your reels yeah oh yeah I would love that you if you definitely if you want to laugh definitely check out the reels so I hang out mostly on Instagram at the virtual Jones nice yeah. And before you go, is there any big thought in your mind that you feel called to share with our listeners? To that mama out there, whether you're a brand new mama, you're wanting to be a mama, whatever it may be, man, just, I would just say, come home to you, ask you what you desire, because you are worthy of that. For real, you really are. And it's possible. You can have that. So just honor yourself, honor your desire. I love that. That is the most brilliant way to finish this call. Asking yourself, what do I desire? And letting that speak from your heart and allowing it to be okay. Whatever that is Mm -hmm. and taking time for you because you're worthy of it. I love that. You deserve that. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of the Make Life Fun podcast. Thank you so much. I am so overjoyed to be here. So thank you. You're very welcome. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Make Life Fun show. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave us a review. We are also on YouTube as well. And wherever you like to listen to your podcast, let us know what you love about this show. Because the more you love it, the more other people can enjoy it too. And that ripple effect, right? So I am so glad you are here. Stay blessed by the best. Until next time, we will talk soon.